हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू आर नेक्स्ट पॉडकास्ट इंटरव्यू ऑफ स्वस्थ भारत विथ आर ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर स्नेह भार्गवा सो वी आर लकी टू हैव मैम हेयर थैंक यू ख्याति फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी बट फर्स्ट थिंग आई हैव टू टेल यू इज दैट आई एम इन माय नाइन्टी फोर्थ ईयर ऑफ लाइफ एंड आई कैन डिवाइड माय लाइफ रियली इन Thirty years pre AIMS, thirty years at AIMS, and thirty years post AIMS. I am still working, and uh, though not actively professionally, but now administratively. I started school at the age of five. My father uh, took me to the school. I spent the rest of my school career. at the city of thart convent lahore my mother had already noticed that i was looking after sick dolls taking them to the hospital no one in the family who was a doctor but it had just come to me and i said well i want to do medicine yes. so i joined the science stream now i am in college now and the biology teacher was very good and maybe my intention of doing science really further convinced me that yes i would like to do science and possibly do medicine the choice now was where to go in 1948 i joined lady harding medical college so my first choice was that i would do pathology because i liked the subject so when it came to pathology i decided i, I will want to do pathology but there was no vacancy 6 months you wait there'll be a vacancy in 6 oh. months mm. there was a vacancy in urban hospital in the blood bank okay. which was attached to pathology okay. so they said you do do you have 6 months in the blood bank okay. chief of the blood bank and the chief of radiology radiology was next to each other mm. the departments yeah. they were friends and professor of radiology learning that i am i am not being able to decide what to do he said why don't you do radiology there are no people who are doing radiology and uh, that will be a good thing for you in radiology there is some patient contact yeah so i said all right i went to radiology professor of radiology was very keen to help me because no one was doing radiology <laughs> yeah. so she she said to me you join you can join tomorrow and i will make you an assistant to the professor so she was not only giving me a job she was giving me a rise right. so that began my journey in radio radiology and i sailed for england 1955 the course was 2 years 6 months in physics and 18 months clinical work so i joined the course Yeah. enjoyed the enjoyed the course mm. finished in 2 years whatever i was supposed to learn and then decided to do one years experience registrarship as they called it in england at that time i wrote letter to the chief of urban hospital who was my main mentor and that what do i do so he said you come back come back home All India Medical Institute is being set up, and you should aim to get in there. And there's no need for you to do radiotherapy. So I also didn't want to do radiotherapy, and I decided I'll Stay sail out. home. Yeah. And 1958, I sailed home. I just want to ask you, like, what are the latest? Like, how do you keep yourself updated with yes. the latest advancement of the radiology? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, radiology was discovered by a German physicist called Röntgen. He was experimenting on vacuum tubes, mm. and in that there was a a plate lying there with the silver lining, mm. and that plate got black. Okay. 
and he realized that there's uh, some rays that are going there that are making the plate black mm. while he was studying vacuum tubes. You see? Yeah. So that, that it's not only what I am studying, but there's some rays that are coming out yeah. of the glass tubes. He then put in something there to see, and he found that the rays went right through. Mrs. Ramjan's hand is the first x-ray that was done mm -hmm. on a glass plate. Okay. Right? So, 1895. Ranjan then refined the technique, etc. And ultimately it came to that you can, on a film, mm. uh, record mm. the body. Firstly, things recorded were only um, those with high density. Like mineral, you could see the bones, but you couldn't see the skin and the muscles. Okay. He published it in 1890. 96. Uh, radiology in the 50s when I joined was the youngest of the subjects that were in medicine. Medicine was known for centuries. Yeah. But technology-wise, the first technology that got into medicine was in uh, radiology. radiology. Let, me, let us know what are the very common misconceptions people have about radiology. Can you clarify one of them, anyone? Radiology is, of course, uh, in scientific terms is different. Yeah. But essentially, it takes, um, I don't want to use the word photography because <laughs> photography is external. Yeah. What, what we are looking at is internal. internal. What uh, Ranjan did, he, he understood that uh, these are the things that will go through, like wood, it will go through easily. Okay. But if you put lead, the rays will stop. So the first thing they did was to protect themselves from this, because they didn't know what this radiation was. Now radiation, it is an ionizing ray, mm -hmm. not a straightforward light ray. Mm -hmm. So in ionizing, they break into the neutrons and the protons and then can injure you. And the first part of the body that is injured is the blood. So people and your nails, hands. So people who worked with the rays got radiation burn. And you know, the first atomic bomb that was thrown mm -hmm. was also radiation, radiation. and people yeah. died because of that. And here, the doses in which you are using it uh, can injure your blood. And so the main thing that everyone knows, uh, the layperson knows is that radiation causes damage to your blood and your skin. So people are scared of radiation. Yeah. That is the uh, misconception that they have. If you can describe any of your challenging or a very memorable case which you really remember, mm -hmm. any one of your memorable case. Oh, you heard the word CT scan? Yes. Everyone knows what yes. a CT scan is? Yeah. Sne Bharga brought the CT scan to India. Oh my God. One okay. <laughs> really, really. Okay, true. now how did that happen? Okay. I, I was working at uh, All India Institute Medical yes. Sciences. Uh, I had worked 12 years till, and I had not availed of any um, scholarship or travel abroad. So I decided that I now should have a fellowship and go around the world and see what is happening in other countries compared to what we were doing. Okay. So I uh, applied to the World Health Organization for a travel fellowship mm -hmm. and I uh, wrote out the countries I would like to visit and the institutions mm -hmm. that I would like to visit. Yeah. In short, it was that I would go to Scandinavia first, which mm -hmm. was very advanced in radiology. Then I'd go to England. After my learned a lot, learned that we were very primitive. We needed to upgrade in every aspect. 
uh, academically as well as technically. Mm. And everything cost money, yeah. right? And, and radiology is the most expensive department to run. Now I was in, um, in the US, US and I opted to go to Boston, a hospital attached to Harvard University. Mm. Massachusetts General Hospital. The chief of Massachusetts General Hospital was uh, one from Eastern Europe, Jan yeah. Taveras. And I had the opportunity to interact with him every day. Mm. He told me that you should go to uh, New York mm. for this workshop, which mm. is a, a workshop I used to run. And now that I have come here, it is mm. still running and it's uh, uh, worth attending. Mm. Next, next day, he announced, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Hounsfield, Dr. Hounsfield. Hounsfield, when he showed the pictures, he showed every part of the brain. The brain has structures in it which are solid, it has structures which are liquid, and it has structures which are bone. And the technology he showed, you could see the bone separately, you could see the, so the tissue separately, and you could see the fluid separately. And this was the biggest or the most difficult technology that we were manually doing till that time. And immediately I knew that I have to get this to India. If I have come on after 12 years, and learned, this is what I have learned. A professor, assistant professor came and he said to me, um, while you are visiting, why don't you go and see this machine which is lying in the basement and no one knows what it is, but it's called ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I said, fine, let me go. So I went down into the basement, basement mein, <laughs> and uh, I twisted all the knobs, couldn't see anything, couldn't understand. Came home with the British pictures, but the knowledge that I could go and see ultrasound. Yeah. Right? When I came back, you think anyone would give me money? No. I showed pictures, they, who's going to give me the money to buy this? Yeah. I, I go to the director and he says, 54 lakhs at oh. that time. At the, that time? At that time, and only head. Oh. It was only a head scanner. Sne Bhargav bought the head scanner into Delhi, not only in India, but whole of Southeast Asia. The best, the best joke was, when the British were here, if you wanted money, so if you want to go to North Block, you have to go from pillar to post to get some money. Mm. And we had one professor of cardiovascular surgery who was not a pillar, but he was from the south. Mm. And he had very good connections with the officials in, in North Block. He found out that the, the Swedish International Development Agency, that is CEDA, is willing to give a grant to India. Oh, wow. And we got 130 million Swedish kroners. Wow. <laughs> really, really inspiring. And thank you for bringing such a huge thing in India for us. Seriously, hats off to you, ma'am. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about the current generation. We have seen, you know, most of the patients uh, have the, these concerns of anxiety about undergoing radiological procedures. Hmm. So what do you have to say about that? But I told you that yeah. you have to just explain to them yeah. that the a normal x-ray yeah. gives radiation which cannot affect you. Okay. It's more than, it is less than what the sun gives you if okay. you go up higher. Yes. So um, uh, there is nothing you can protect yourself. Yeah. And the, you have, I mean, Government of India has set up yes. an Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. You have to wear a badge. Okay. Okay. And uh, that, that badge records uh, the radiation, radiation you receive. Okay. And every three months, 
you send the batch to be processed in Bombay okay. by the AERB hmm. and they send you a report back so you know that you are safe. The build there, they have laid down the basics of how the building has to be made. It like normal is one brick, but for a, for a radiology department, X-ray, yeah. not therapy. Therapy yeah. is even thicker. You have to put two bricks. Mm. They have laid down the guidelines mm -hmm. for construction. Okay. So yeah. um, uh, we know mm. that we are safe Six. because every month, every three months, mm. we get a report. Yeah. And we get a report on yourself and on your equipment. Yeah, so, so both the doctors and the patients are completely safe. Completely safe because the equipments are also safe. Also safe. What do you want to advise to the medical students and aspiring radiologists who are looking to pursue this career? Since the CT scan came, developed, I mean, hundreds of years ahead. It was the back processing office. It now became the front processing office. Changed to the extent that we are no longer human. We are organs. Every organ can be done separately. Yeah. Now, the future of radiology lies in subspecialization. You specialize in radiology, but now you have to specialize in an organ okay. because the thing is so wide. So what is most important is that everyone who wants to choose radiology as a career must also know what the consultant wants okay. yeah. and answer that okay. your, and your reports and you must make protocols. Hmm. Like outside of your profession, what are the some interests and hobbies that help you maintain your work-life balance and manage your demands and everything? While I was in my 40s, yeah. I started thinking, what am I going to do when I retire? Yeah. I'm very fond of the garden. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I thought I would learn bonsai. So okay. I joined the bonsai classes oh. and learned how to make bonsai. So lovely and very, I mean, the whole talk was so inspiring, I would say. And I mean, I'm sure all the aspiring radiologists will so much relate to you and, you know, will learn a lot from you. Oh, so okay. thank you so much, ma'am, for having us here. And uh, we are so blessed and lucky to meet you here and, you know, have you in our podcast. Thank you so much. My pleasure.